the Metropolitan Tabernacle Opening. Religious services and other meetings in connection with the opening of the Metropolitan Tabernacle, Newington. The committee is very happy to inform their friends and the public, that the vast edifice erected for the church and congregation of the Reverend Charles Haddon Spurgeon is now nearly completed. The sum required has, by God's gracious providence, been obtained with the exception of about £3,000. It is firmly believed that this remaining amount will be raised by means of the bazaar, and the contributions given at the opening meetings, in order that the large numbers who desire to be present upon this occasion may be accommodated. The proceedings have been extended throughout a whole month, and there are one or two days yet unoccupied, for which services will be afterwards advertised. If the present arrangement should prove insufficient owing to the early date at which this circular is issued, the particulars cannot be given, nor is it possible to publish all the names of the ministers and gentlemen who will assist at the services. The present program will be adhered to as nearly as possible, but some variations may very naturally occur. The meetings are, many of them, definite in their subjects and objectives both for the sake of variety and edification. We desire not only to welcome our friends, and accept their assistance, but to set forth the public testimony of our faith and practice. It is hoped that the more prominent features of our religious views, as a church and denomination, will thus be publicly expounded while our union with the faithful will be unmistakably affirmed. Friends desiring tickets for any of the services are requested to make their application by letter to Mr. C. Blackshaw, Metropolitan Tabernacle, Newington, S. They are requested to enclose a stamped envelope, bearing their address, and to state clearly what meeting they wish to attend, as the number of tickets is limited, when compared with the expected demand, no large supply can be issued to any one person. It is hoped that many will see fit to enclose a contribution with their application. The committee will endeavor, as far as possible, to oblige every applicant but they cannot absolutely engage in every case, to supply the particular tickets required. Delay will necessarily occur in attending to so extensive an arrangement, but our friends will exercise patience, and we hope all will be gratified. In conclusion, the committee begs the renewed assistance of all their friends in this, their crowning effort, and they beg it to be distinctly understood that no persuasion will prevail upon their pastor to use the building for public worship on the Sabbath until the whole of the liabilities are discharged. Shall the house be closed a single Sunday? We believe in our gracious God, and trust that he will so influence his people, that by the end of the second week, or before the Good Friday has passed away, all will be accomplished, in which case we shall meet for regular worship on Lord's Day, March 31st. The proceeds of collections, after payment of contracted liabilities, will be needed for the completion of the front boundaries, the fitting up of the schools, furnishing the students' classrooms and other works which the committee has not as yet commenced. Feeling it to be highly objectionable to run into debt, they have left many matters to be finished when the funds shall be forthcoming, and they are cheerfully confident that before these preliminary meetings are over, this great temple of the Lord will have been finished in every department. First week, Monday, March 18th, meeting for prayer, at 7 o'clock in the morning. The Reverend Charles Haddon Spurgeon will preside. A bazaar will be held in the lecture hall and school rooms, commencing at 12 o'clock each day, on Tuesday, March 19th, Wednesday, March 20th, Thursday, March 21st, Friday, March 22nd, and Saturday. March 23rd. Tickets of admission, one shilling each. Contributions of goods are earnestly requested, and should be forwarded to Mrs. Spurgeon, Clapham. Second week, Monday, March 25th, morning at 7, meeting for prayer. The Reverend G. Rogers will preside. Afternoon at 3, sermon by Reverend Charles Haddon Spurgeon, evening at 7, sermon by Reverend Whitbrook of Bloomsbury Chapel. Tuesday. March 26th, public meeting of our contributors, chair to be taken at half past six, by Sir Henry Havelock, the Reverend C. Stovall, M. Barringer, J. Bigwood, F. Tucker, J. Russell, and other ministers and gentlemen will address the meeting. Tickets will be given to contributors. Wednesday, March 27th, 
public meeting of the neighboring churches, chair to be taken at half past six, by Dr. Steen, the Reverend W. Harrison of Lyon Street, Anemone Hall, of Surrey Chapel, R. W. Butts, of Hanover Chapel, G. H. White, of Bermondsey, G. Rogers, of Albany, Chapel, and other ministers and gentlemen are expected to address the meeting. Good Friday, March 29th, two sermons will be preached by the Rev. Charles Haddon Spurgeon. Morning at a quarter to eleven, evening at seven. Tickets for these services will be chiefly given to members and seat holders. Third week, Monday, April 1st, morning at seven, meeting for prayer. The Rev. B. Davis will preside, evening at seven, a sermon will be preached by the Rev. John Graham of Craven Chapel. Tuesday, April 2nd, a public meeting of our London Baptist Brethren, chair to be taken at 7 p.m., by Sir S. M. Peto, Bart, the Reverence A. C. Thomas, J. H. Hinton, P. Dickerson, J. Bez Burns, D. D. and other ministers and gentlemen are expected to take part in the proceedings. Wednesday, April, 3. A public meeting of the denominations, chair to be taken at 6.30 p.m., by E. Ball Esquire, M.P.E. Cordroy, Esquire, Rev. W. G. Lewis, Rev. J. Hard, Rev. W. Burchell, and others, will be present. The subject of the unity of the church will be discussed by able ministers and laymen representing the various sections of the one church. Thursday. April 4th, a sermon will be preached by the Reverend Octavius Winslow of Bath, at 7 p.m. Fourth week, Monday, April 8th, morning at 7, meeting for prayer, evening at 7, our own church. The pastor, elders and deacons will speak, the former ministers are invited, and the Reverend John Spurgeon, the father of the pastor, is expected to preside. By this meeting, we desire to testify to the independency unity and fellowship which each Church of Christ has within itself. Tuesday, April 9th, Baptismal Service at 7 p.m., a sermon upon believers' baptism, by Rev. H. S. Brown, of Liverpool. Rev. Charles Haddon Spurgeon will baptize. Wednesday, April 10th, Communion, Dr. Steen, Rev. C. H. Spurgeon and Dr. Hamilton will preside. This service is intended to set forth the essential oneness of the Church, and the real fellowship in the body of Christ which is the privilege of all her members. Members of the various Protestant bodies can apply for cards through their pastors, or where this is impossible, through any members of the Church under the care of the Rev. Charles Haddon Spurgeon. The offering at this communion will be devoted to the memorial on behalf of the widow of the late Reverend Jonathan George. Thursday, April 11th, afternoon at 3, Calvinistic Doctrine. The Reverend Charles Haddon Spurgeon will introduce the subject and five ministers will take up the points by which the Calvinistic creed is distinguished. The service commences at 3, there will be a pause at 5 for refreshment and the friends will reassemble at 6.30. The addresses will last about half an hour each, and will be printed, as a manual of doctrine and be a memorial of the opening of this great house of God. Friday, April 12th, Oration by Hobby Vincent, Esquire. Subject, Nonconformity in its Political Bearings. Chair to be taken at 7 p.m. by Sir John Burgoyne. Tickets, 1 shilling. Reserved seats half a crown. Fifth week. The arrangements for the fifth week will be announced in the April magazines. It is hoped that many friends from the country, being in town for the May meetings, will then favor us with their company, and to this end their applications will have the preference. Please pray the Holy Spirit will use these meetings to bring many to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ.